everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So in continuation of what I've been doing today is catching up on what was happening, <coughs> apologies, in the national finals last night. There were like eight different countries kind of going through their processes at different stages of trying to select their entry. So last night it was Este Lau semi-final two. Now I was lucky enough to be able to watch semi-final one live because it was during the week and it didn't clash with anything. Now last night because I was watching San Remo, I wasn't able to watch semi-final two, even though I reacted to the studio versions and kind of gave my favorites on those. Now, first and foremost, I've seen the results. I think I'm gonna have to stop doing as they allow, because I think I've got the kiss of death. Because, like, in semi final one, my absolute favourite was Kaya with Vikus. Vikus. Um, and then in semi final two, like the, the two songs, my number one and number two, is it Gyrice? Gyrice? Anyway, he's out. And I've watched his performance being like, was it bad? It wasn't even bad. And also Golden Shores um, with Shearer and Pumud. I watched their performance. Okay, vocally there were one or two issues, but like I think in the future I can't kind of give. That's what I'm kind of nervous about doing this music video because I generally think I do have the kiss of death. So we now know all of the ten songs that are going to be competing in the final next Saturday. I'm assuming I haven't worked that one out yet. And so I've had to go back to the ones that qualified in semi-final one to remind myself, uh, what, not what those are, but just kind of watch the performances. And then obviously I've watched all of the performances from last night. So from that, I think I, I'm pretty confident in my personal top 10. Now listen, this is a personal top 10. I, I am not predicting anything. If you were using or going by anything I've said in the past with Estee Lau, more for you, because I obviously don't know anything when it comes to Estonian music, other than the fact that some of these songs I like. Apparently, Estonia doesn't. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I am going to watch a recap of all the songs that made it to the final, and for each one, I'm gonna tell you where it places in my top 10. <laughs> It's really difficult, isn't it? We've not seen this live. Bless Elisa, she's got COVID. Hopefully she'll be fine for the final. Um, but nonetheless, I think this song is a great, great, great song. Again, I was watching the music video today. The view count on that, a lot of people seem to be ch seem to have checked into that song. I can imagine quite a lot of them are Eurovision fans because this kind of taps into Eurovision, Eurovision fans like me. I know there are different types of Eurovision fans, but this very much is a kind of Eurovision fan sound. Um, I like this song. It's just a shame that I don't know what this is like live, but on studio version, because that's all I can really judge it by, it is my second favourite of all the ten. Look, at the end of the day, like I said, I was a huge fan of Vicus, so the fact that this has gone ahead of Vicus really upsets me. People have informed me that, in fact, he is a YouTuber, TikToker person, I don't know. Nonetheless, these guys are here because they've obviously got a huge, or he's got a huge following in Estonia, which meant that they could get that fifth place into the final because of the televote. There is nothing about this song I like. Nothing. I think I've yet to listen to this song the full way through. Don't get me wrong, I didn't mind how they staged this. I quite liked the fact that they started by coming onto the stage, as in like they were in the back, in the back of the theatre, right? And they kind of walk onto the stage. Well, that was quite clever, but I don't like this song. It's just a loop. Okay, so, <laughs> when I started doing this YouTube channel, it was literally just like a creative outlet. Didn't think that anyone would really watch it. And obviously, I'm aware that some people are now watching these videos. So when I was watching Semi-Final One, I, I, I felt like I was watching it, but I have to admit, the first part of the song, I wasn't concentrating, because I don't really like this song, and I didn't like this song on the studio version. And then I commented when I basically watched the recap in my video, 
that I thought he sang quite well. Well, from what I heard, I thought he did. Like, in the second half, I thought it was quite good. But no, I have now seen this today full. Yes, the first part of this is not good vocally. So, obviously, for Saturday, he's going to have to pick up that vocal. Um, I listened to it again today, and boom. Uh, I think he's great, but ultimately, yeah, I've, I've finally decided that this song is not a good, not a strong song. Yeah, I don't like this song. My way back home Without you Cause I love It is in a story My way Okay, so first and foremost, there is another YouTuber called Terry, um, who does a great job at actually doing really in-depth analysis of songs at Eurovision. And he informed me that when she drops, I think she never intended to, or didn't know that they were going to drop her that fast, because when they drop her, and then obviously she carries on singing, it, it, it bless her you could see it really affected her. I didn't obviously know that. I basically was just a bit critical. I was like, oh, what happened to her vocal there? It's because she didn't expect that drop to go as fast, I believe, is what it did. Um, listen, I actually think this song is much better live. It kind of comes alive a little bit. I still think when we have that drop, the song's got to have a climax. And for some benotes reason, that last 10 seconds, the song just plateaus which is such a shame, but she was saved in semi-final one by Televote, so this is gonna do well, right? With all of the songs that I've listened today, for me, number seven. I think if this song finished stronger and had a stronger finish, I think it would be higher, because it has the makings of a song that I like, obviously, Alina, Eurovision royalty, and yes, when she gets the vocals right, and actually, vocally, 95% of it was great. Um, I just feel at the end of it, it loses steam because for some crazy reason, she's decided not to go for a dramatic finish to the song. It ends on a bit of a damp squid, like a damp squid, on a damp squid, whatever the saying is. Right, I'm going to have to apologise because, again, when I was watching semi-final one, I think I went into it because I'd heard, obviously, the studio versions with preconceived ideas. So I knew the songs that I wanted to tune in on fully and have, would have my full attention and songs that maybe I allowed my mind to wander a little bit. Um, as a result, I didn't really get much of a vibe from the studio version. And moreover, as a result of that, when I was watching semi-final one, I wasn't in exactly in tune other than the fact that I thought vocally he killed it, but I would have expected that at a bare minimum. Now, watching it today, I actually think it's better than I thought it was. It is quite emotional, and he does pack a punch with emotion. And actually today, I actually really, really enjoyed this. So I didn't think this was gonna be as high as it was, but for me, number five, I actually quite like this. And I'm going through, I mean, for a Eurovision returnee, it's one of the higher ones, right? Um, in my top 10. I think vocally he sells it, and actually, yeah, it's quite an emotional song. Yes, I don't know what he's singing about. He could be singing about anything, but the way that he's performing it, it's emotional. Okay, so yeah, I really, really like this song. I, this is one of the ones that I wanted to get through in semi-final two, and it did. Um, okay, so the performance is nice. I mean, obviously the singer is, is delivering high energy, but I really had to kind of work out the songs that I thought would be competitive. No, this is my personal top 10. Even, right, throw that away, Shane. Number six, number six. When I was watching this today, I would have thought that would definitely have come before Mr. Lepland. But um, no, Miss Leplin's performance today kind of struck a chord with me. But this is number six. I like this song. I like this song. I think all of my top six I have downloaded. So yeah, I like this song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so apology time on Studio Listen. When I reacted to all of the semi-final two songs, this song was nowhere to be seen. I generally could not connect with it. Also knowing that in quarterfinal, in the quarterfinal, it was saved by the jury, so the televote didn't kind of see anything in this necessarily. Now this performance was good, and actually it was very cleverly staged. And the um, yeah, I I I, I was. For a song that I wasn't particularly interested in, at the end of the three minutes, I took notice. And then I actually watched it again, because I think when I was watching it today for the first time, I was just a bit surprised. So I wanted to watch it for a second time with the knowledge that actually, oh, I think I might like this. And number four, I think this is a real, real credible song. And as I listened to it for the second time, I thought, if this goes to Eurovision, I think this would do quite well. So I like this song. And as many people predicted, I was wrong about this song. It is actually quite good. Okay, so evidently we've got another kind of COVID victim, I am assuming, because last night we only saw the music video, which is a shame. I would have liked to have seen this live. Um, now, as a result, I can't really say anything more than what I've already said about this song. Like, it is a really credible sound and there is a market out there that would definitely pick up the phone for this. I think it just runs out of steam a little bit. When it gets to kind of two minutes, the song doesn't give you anything else. So I just think it runs out of steam. But I know some people really like this and I know people who would have not have heard this yet, but I know their musical taste that would be really into this. Um, for me, it's number eight. For me, it's number eight, in all seriousness. It's not my sort of sound, but when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, it's a credible sound. It's a credible sound. Okay, so in all seriousness, anyone that follows my channel will know that I'm really into country western music. And it's been quite sweet where people have commented when I reacted to the semi-final two studio versions, they thought that, I think I put this in fourth, and they thought that it would be a lot higher based on what they know about my musical tastes. Um, all I can say is today when I watched this, I was super, super excited. Um, one thing quickly, I don't know how I feel about the two cowboys sparring against each other. Um, I mean, it adds a kind of extra element, an extra piece of drama, theatre to the thing. But I don't think you need it because, I mean, Stefan sells this song. Um, it's just, I honestly, honestly, honestly think of all of these top ten, there are only, in all seriousness, two songs, which I think if Estonia sends those songs outside of Estonia going to Turin, the songs that I think would be safe qualifiers um, is Jagup, who I put in fourth. And there is something with that song, with his staging, with, with the way that he looks, uh, his voice. There is something about that song that I can see a lot of people connecting with. Um, but this song, it, it, for me, it's the obvious choice. But I mean, I like I said at the beginning, I I think I've cursed this song now, and I almost I almost don't want to put it as my number one because I think I curse songs at SD Lau. Um, this is a no brainer. This song live, that song went from there for me to there. Um, this is the obvious choice for Estonia, in my opinion. But apparently, that opinion is cursed. So we will see. Uh -huh. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And he's loving life. Like I said, high energy and his vocal was good. Now, obviously, if you've got a good uh, photographic memory, you'll realise that there's one number left and that is number three. Now, I actually was going to put this as in second just to kind of credit the fact that we've seen this live and we haven't seen Elisa's live. Um, I thought it was kind of throwaway Scandi pop on a studio listen, and it would you would seem you would think if you know my musical taste I would be really into this, but I, 
it's it's generic enough that I've heard it before, but I will say live, it just does then get elevated. Her live vocal was good. I mean, those ladies, they just bring that extra element at the end in like that last third, particularly that last chorus. Um, they've managed to kind of get the sound tech absolutely perfect uh, because it sounded amazing. So I was I was ready to put this down and I was kind of kind of think, yeah, it wouldn't be in my top five. But then when I was watching it today, I was like, oh, she's singing this well. And yeah, the backing vocalists sold it for me. They add that extra element at the end where it stops becoming generic Scandi pop to just a well-performed live pop number. Um, so I quite like that, but that's the thing. I then listened to it again um, when I was in the shower and I was like, oh yeah, it's, it, it's Scandi pop, generic. It's live, it takes on a whole other kind of life. So, yeah. Right, I have probably cursed Stefan, Elisa, Anna, and Jakob, and Oct. In all seriousness, and I bet you the winner will either be Black Velvet, Alina, Minimal Wind, Stig, or Andre and that girl. And actually, it probably is going to be Andre and that girl, because I know loads of people in Estonia uh, are massively supporting that song because of him. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Because... <laughs> I think I've cursed Stefan. Um, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, please do click the notification button uh, so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.